Welcome to Own It, your business and your life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. Yes, there you go. 12.01. Good afternoon, Nicola. Yes. <laughs> Today's focus is the podcast. Also known as 10.01. Good morning, Judith. <laughs> Quite. So, London and Stupa, <laughs> we have connected. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. I hope your weather's better than depicted in that picture where there's a low valley full of cloud. Yes, it's absolutely glorious today. We're having a little spell of four days with no rain. Very good. And we were in the, down the beach yesterday afternoon, lying on sunbeds, in and out the sea. Tiny little nip in the, in the sea, but it's quite bearable. Okay, very good. I know. Better, it's, it's better than a British summer, put it that way. Hmm, excellent. Yeah. So what about your week then? It's been about books and films. I'm rather excited, actually. And I've just had a cup of coffee, so I could be quite high. If I talk fast, <laughs> you'll have to tell me to come down a bit. OK, I will. It's a, a great time of year for me because all my favourite crime writers bring out their annual book. Uh, just in time for Christmas. Uh, well, well I've read, I read them on the day they come out, so it's about six weeks too soon for Christmas for me. <laughs> but, um, the Lee Child is one of my favourites. who writes yes. Jack Reacher. Love and another one of my favourites is Michael Conley, who writes about Harry Bosch. And the interesting thing about both of these series is that they're in, they've written 20, 21 novels each about this character. And Hollywood has been deceptively, unusually, uncharacteristically slow to pick up on the fantastic content. And they've only made two, one, two films out of Jack Reacher and two Netflix series out of Harry Bosch. But more are in the pipeline. But the interesting thing about, well, you know, it's always controversial when they eventually cast an actor, isn't it? Yeah, with pictures, yeah. It went well with Harry Bosch, um, a silver-haired fox uh, who I like. And I'm standing by the choice of Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher, despite the fact that Jack Reacher is a six foot five inch man mountain and Tom Cruise isn't. But no. <laughs> in every regard other than stature, he does justice to the character completely. The character is hard, Nicola, as Cockney say. He's hard. Yeah, he's well hard, yeah. He's well hard. And um, the film number two was out last Friday and I went on Saturday or Sunday and had a lovely time. So I'm up to my ears in crime fiction and films and loving it. And you probably saw I eventually caught up with your recommendation of The Dressmaker and loved that too. I thought you might. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. I thought it was... I, it was, I mean, it was a, it's, a, it's a chick flick probably because it's about female revenge. But even so, it's fantastic. Yeah, I loved everything about it. I love the costumes. I love the atmosphere. I love the characterizations. I just... Well, I, I knew you loved The Dressmaker. Twist, yeah. The plot. Uh, that, that's the medium through which the revenge is is wrought and uh, you love that and yeah. Judy Business who plays the mum has always been one of my favourite actresses it was great yeah it was good and I don't know um, what was the second one Harry Bosch Harry Bosch Hieronymus Bosch they're all by Michael Connolly start at the beginning when I went to LA on holiday about oh, I don't know 15 years ago I insisted on going and looking at what the, what, one of the places where one of the novels was set and funnily enough when I read the first few books I assumed that Harry Bosch, the central LAPD cop, was black. I don't know why I did, I just did. I read probably read three books thinking he was black. Turns out to be white. But it doesn't matter in the least, obviously. It's all about the, the good guys catching the bad guys. Which suggests the perfect actor for him, doesn't it? Or have, Harry they already, Bosch. have they already found someone? Oh, no, Harry Bosch were in season two of Netflix, and I think oh, season right. three and four have been commissioned or are in. Oh. Um, and also he's a little bit... Harry Bosch is silver-haired and older, so I don't know who you were going to suggest. Well, I was thinking of that marvellous black actor who played Luther. Well, um, yes, Harry isn't odd. It's Jack Reacher who's odd. Harry is um, a Vietnam vet. Oh, I see. Using uh, proper old-fashioned police work to catch crims. Yeah, <laughs> crims, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I'm in heaven because uh, Jack Reacher, second film out last week and all my new books coming out now. And last night was the 
uh, announcement of the Man Booker 2016 Prize for Fiction, which is altogether literature, and I'm not describing literature here, but that looks like a good book as well, which I will... Um, yeah, it's, it's exciting, isn't it, when you when all your, your favourite authors bring yes, stuff out? Yes, and then they're a terrible disappointment while you've got to wait another 12 months for them to write another one, but even so, hooray, hooray, I'm having a lovely time. And actually, I could start at the beginning of all of these series again, because it's I've been reading them for 15 or more years, so I could probably... Yeah. The only books I've ever read the series twice of are is in Intervention by Julian May, the Golden Talk series, which is um, like a, a science fiction fantasy kind of thing, and June by Frank Herbert, which is an amazing series of books by um, which were finished off by his son and someone else actually because he died sadly before he could finish his um, his last book. But uh, yeah, love love a bit of sci fi fantasy. Me, there's a, a quirky box set. Um, that you can see on iTunes and other places like that called, ooh, I think it's called Life, L-I-F-E, and it stars Damien Lewis, and it's about 10 years old now. I've watched that twice, at least twice, perhaps even three times, because it's so good and so gripping and so quirky and so funny. And, uh, well, there you go, there's another recommendation of box yeah. called Life, it's starring Damien Lewis. Okay, good stuff. Well, we get, we're into the fall. We're in series two now, and it's the most gripping television I've well, seen. Well, the first series is the most gripping of all time. I'm afraid it goes downhill from there all the way through. But yeah. it's excellent. I mean, she is mesmeric to watch, isn't she? She is completely. We, we cannot work out how she can be the age she is and look so fantastic. Well, you just spend the whole thing gazing at her, thinking, you know, as a perfectly straight woman, thinking, are you the most gorgeous creature ever yet? <laughs> and, and the clothes are good in that as well. So that, she that helps. Does a compelling, strong female lead. And he is the most the evilest of evil villains of all time. Yeah, he's just, he's like a shark, isn't he? Those dark oh, eyes. Ooh. Really quite difficult to watch, that first series, didn't you find? Yeah, yeah, very much so. And um, it's completely made us into n- ninnies over here because we, <laughs> we were feeling quite um, brave and bold at that point. And then we started watching that and we've turned into people who shut the windows at night. Absolutely, psycho killers. That'll yeah. shut your windows every time, won't it? It will. <laughs> but um, we, our, my week's been mostly about mosquitoes and loos because oh. we, we had the traditional Greek loo blockage the other day, which um, necessitated uh, calling in the neighbours for help, being driven to someone called George's, who had departed for Kalamata and Athens and was not going to be seen for another couple of days, which he's got apparently the telescopic rods with the machine that, that drives through the pipes and clears all blockages. And... Um, and he'd gone to Athens for two days, so you can imagine my panic, especially on that day that I had a tummy upset. But uh, um, Alberto, the Albanian chap from down the road, came and saved us. After Now, Judith, where in England would you get an emergency plumber out the same day um, to a not very nice job after he'd done a 15-hour day in the olive press? You just, it just wouldn't happen, would it? No, in a community where people care about their neighbours is the answer. Yeah, that's right. And uh, he came, he, he, an hour, he, he sorted us out and everything is flowing freely again. The mosquitoes have damped their ardour a little bit because um, as soon as we arrived, they smelt fresh meat and they've been going for it ever since. But the l- slightly lower temperatures at night have meant that they're not quite so unbearable, although we are still scratching. And uh, that, you know, going in the sea helps, but uh, also antihistamines help, which I wish I'd known last year because I spent a week out here in absolute itchy torture. I don't know how you can get to your advanced stage of life and not know that an antihistamine helps you stop itching. I mean, when I'm on holiday with my friend Nicola, she has to main mine antihistamines. It's also <laughs> useful on the plane coming back because they put you to sleep. Yeah, and, and oh, do they, right? Well, that explains why we, we were dr- sleeping so long when we were taking them at night then. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it is, you're right. It is a miracle I've got to my age without knowing certain things, but there you go. <laughs> and you said, tell us, talk to us a little bit, because I think this is pertinent for the listener who works from home and for the digital nomad. You told me you'd had a bad back due to the wooden chair you were sitting on. Yeah, yeah, I got the same day that we tried to talk. um, I wasn't feeling very well at all. The loo was blocked, my tummy was bad, and I had a bad back from, I, I think, bad posture. Because um, the chairs just obviously are just like balcony chairs and dining chairs, and they're not really um, office chairs or ergonomic in any way. So mm-hmm. I think um, I'm not sure to be honest. It could have been an offshoot from a tummy upset because as the tummy upsets subsided, so is the backache. Mm-hmm. 
but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, I can always go. There's a there's a, a much talked about shop in Kalamata, which is a 45 minute drive away round tortuous mountain roads <laughs> called Practica, and everybody mentions it in hushed breath in the same way that people talk about IKEA in the UK. <laughs> so, so I think a visit to Practica might be on the cards. Well, I, I mean, if you're going to be there for six months, I know at the moment you're getting up at lunchtime and going to the beach and things, but as the, win- as the winter draws on, you might sit in your office chair a bit longer. And I, one of the first questions I asked about Normandy, is there a proper office chair? And, and certainly when I get to St. Martin, I'll be going to the equivalent of Practica and getting a decent chair to sit on. Yeah, I think I think it's essential. I mean, I don't want to spend you know time. No. I, have, I could, I can work at the work. I've got a roost. You know, one of those. It's it's a, it was on um, Kickstarter, and it's a roost, and it raises your laptop up to the level where it, you're looking at the screen straight on. Oh, very and, good. And you can put it on a kitchen worktop, and it it means you can stand to work, which is rather good. What's fueled your fire this week then? Well, I've had a couple of nice testimonials. Um, I've been, uh, one came in after I asked for it months ago and one was just um, uh, ad hoc. And it's not so much what they tell me about me, the testimonials that I like, although obviously I like that too. You'd be a mad woman not to. What I like is what they tell me about them, how much changed they are by the work that they've done uh, under my, you know, guiding light over the yeah. last year or three. Um, you know, str- one, one mentioned particularly a, a strengthened sense of self when it came to pitching for something, you know, a price below which she wouldn't go and she felt resolute and strong about that that she wouldn't have done a while back. And that sort of change in people's lives where they, they no longer have to rely on me to sort of... Um, bet them not to go below a certain price yeah they just feel strong enough in their own right about their own abilities that they don't feel the need to go down there do you know what I mean and that that's a really nice it just reminds you that that, that, not that I ever doubt it that that the work is very worthwhile yeah absolutely and it just reinforces that uh, that you're not breeding a, a a bunch of entrepreneurs who rely on you for every move uh, which I definitely don't want to do and mm. um, yeah I, I really want them to become strong and confident in their own right yeah it's, it's an interesting one isn't it because when people hire a, um, a therapist for example or when, pe- uh, um, when people hire a coach there is a slight fear that one will become dependent but if, if the coach stroke therapist or you know the two together are doing a good job then um, you, you end up graduating and moving on don't you? Well it's like parents you want them eventually to leave home if they stay at your house forever you haven't done it right have you? No absolutely very true very true. So I've been reading um, a book called The Code of the Extraordinary Mind by Vishen Le- Carney and Vision is the guy who started Mind Valley and he had it's a brilliant book I'm really enjoying it it's it's a combination of Vision's own story of building Mind Valley and the ups and downs along the way and practical exercises that he's gained from hanging out with some of the best minds in the world you know because he's a regular visitor to Necker Island and Tony Robbins Fiji res- Resort and he gets to hang out with people like Elon Musk and speak on stages with the you know the greatest thinkers on the, on the planet and um and also it's got some nice little practical exercises in each chapter which i really like so um i'm going to read it all through and then i'm going to go back to the beginning and, and work through it doing the exercises uh, because i definitely feel i'm in a i'm in a real crossroads judith I, I feel i'm going to talk about it in project updates more but i feel like i'm at a crossroads in my business life my personal life everything and I'm going a bit woo woo in my search for meaning and what to do next and uh, you've mentioned this book to us before is it your second reading or, and is it a real book did you carry it with you it's a real book it's got good size writing in it which is why I carried it as a physical book I haven't actually read it I've had it on my bedside table for about a month or so now okay. waiting to read it out here on the beach okay. okay very very good like it a lot Would you like to hear about 18 proven ways to enjoy a successful location independent business and the freedom to live wherever you like? Own It The Summit is a pack of 18 dynamite interview recordings with globally successful entrepreneurs sharing their secrets of the real laptop lifestyle. 
We handpicked each of these people to interview to show you how to set yourself free to design your ideal lifestyle, whether working from home or traveling the world, while running a successful virtual business that you absolutely love. If you're bored sick of working for someone else, trading time for money, or of being a business owner living in one place, sick of the terrible weather and desperate to travel and have adventures, Own It The Summit is for you. These 18 global entrepreneurs share their stories. You can listen and enjoy their tales of where they started, how they founded and grew their businesses, the tools and techniques they use to work on the go, and what living and working in total virtual freedom really looks and feels like. By the time you've listened to these dynamite interviews, you'll be so inspired that you'll want to set up your own virtual business and be researching how to live and work on the go. But Judith and I pulled out all the stops to find the people we both know to be living an exceptional life, running exceptional businesses. Participating in this summit was directly responsible for me deciding to up sticks and go and live in Greece. And Judith was already in preparation to go and live in the Caribbean. With that in mind, you can imagine, we drilled down for the nitty gritty answers to the questions you might have about living and working abroad. After the event, testimonials poured in and everyone seemed to find something different in each speaker to really enjoy. Just one of the testimonials read, I've never been online that long, two days in a row, my new record for studying online. That was Eve. Claire said it was great content. Her family was getting cross with her, huddled in her study. So great to be reminded of all the supportive tools out there for digital nomads love your speakers just visit ownitthesummit.com and get your hands on these life-changing recordings today right client challenge of the week then well, we um, originally decided that we would talk uh, as per a request from a client of mine called Tara about video marketing. And I think while she's been waiting for us to get to this, she's gone ahead. And, and, and in fact, I've got some intel from her to share with you later. But oh, lovely. when I suggested it this week, you said and we could we could extend it to, to audio marketing, too, so that I could contribute. But funnily enough, we then discovered overnight, I sent you an email and you responded before I'd woken up this morning, where actually we're bringing together audio and video marketing. Yeah, I, I, I particularly, I mean, if you think about it as a create a content creation thing as well as marketing, yeah. it, it is simply the most effective, efficient way to create content. And if you're a, a video, I mean, you're, you're an audio person, I'm a video person. I love to consume video now, now and I, I'm not so massively keen on making it, but it doesn't have to be a talking head. It can be you talking over a bunch of slides which fade in as you talk and that visually engages ages the person so that's a great way to create content and of course then you can put it onto facebook as native content i.e upload it straight to your facebook page you can put it on youtube which is you know youtube's the second biggest search engine in the world and you can't ignore youtube although i have been to be honest for the last few years um and and the thing is with video you could then strip out the audio and you can get it transcribed so you, you end up with three pieces of content for every single learning modality um but then you know there's lots to be said for audio marketing as well i love you know the podcast is a whole different thing and and although we are now thinking of putting onto youtube the fact that we start with audio means that we can concentrate a lot harder on what's happening can't we let's talk about um audio marketing in project updates which is about our podcast what um what i wanted to talk about today was what you've been learning from your man, Pemberton. Oh, yes. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. Because banging a video on YouTube is no different than publishing a book on Amazon. It's not going to make any sales or achieve any value for you unless you know how to market it in the place where you've put it. And uh, I, I don't know how to advise clients how to SEO a video. What little tips can you share? So, okay, so let's assume we've all made a video. And we bang it up on YouTube. What next, Nicola? What's the, well, what's the I, know, can what's use, I can use Phoebe as an example, my daughter, because she started. Um, she's had a YouTube channel for ages, done nothing with it, and then she worked through John's course, and she's putting up makeup videos, and they're makeup videos with a twist because she's quite um, entertaining and amusing. Um, so they're quirky. Uh, but what she, what John has taught her to do, is to make a video um and so this is this is you know for people who who are good content who who are prolific content creators she makes a video and then she thinks backwards 
okay, what's this video mainly about? And sometimes it might be a smoky eye, eye look um, or a full look, you know, say it's, you know, all autumn colors or whatever. So she then goes to the Google Keyword Planner, which, you know, you have to remember that in the same way that a blog post works, a YouTube video works in the same way. You've got a title, you've got a description, and then you've got tags that tell the search engines what this video is about and all this blog post is about indeed. And so then she goes to the keyword planner and she looks at, she puts in um, smoky eye makeup to see if there's a better phrase she could use rather than that and how many searches a, a month that phrase gets. What your ideal um, search results are between 1,000 and 10,000 results. Any more than 10,000 results and you're going to be competing with some really big players who've got a lot more SEO welly than you have. So go, you know, it's better to have a tightly targeted video that gets views rather than all you know blog posts when i say video think blog posts as well because it's exactly the same so what you need to do then is you need to get your exact key phrase that you've decided this whole thing's going to be about and write your title before you upload your video so rename your video to the exact to contain at the beginning of the video name the exact key phrase you're after and it's better to go for three to five word key phrases than it is to go for one to one to three key you know one to th one to two words so you've now got your video that is named appropriately and you're going to upload it to youtube it's got it's got the keyword in the in the title of the video then you're going to choose a, a, a title for your video which will also contain that key phrase exactly now you can extend on that title so you can say um smoky eyes uh, smoky eye makeup with a fall twist or something like that or you could do smoky eye makeup for, for guys which is what she did when she made nelson up with smoky eyes the other day. um so you can say as much as you like and, and actually your video should be um as descriptive your title should be as descriptive as possible without being ridiculously long now you're moving on to your description write a little sentence about what the video is about now the, only the first line of that sentence will appear when the video is on youtube without people having to click more to see the rest of your description so make sure that in your first sentence a you contain the key phrase and b you entice people enough to want to watch the video so be very succinct in that first line and then drop it down so you've got a lot more description um, one good thing to do is to put, um, if you've got a transcription, and, and YouTube actually lets you do transcriptions of your own videos really easily, you have to wait for a little while after you've uploaded the video for it to process, but then after it's been you know, processing for about five or ten minutes, it will offer you the option to see the transcription. Now, YouTube's own transcription is going to be pretty rubbish, but it's got a really nice facility where you can just go through and... Um, correct the transcription so it matches exactly what you you are saying so that's a, a, a good thing to do if you've got a content heavy, heavy video now obviously with phoebe she's not going to transcribe her makeup videos because she's generally talking nonsense while she's doing it so what she does is she just writes um a little bit about what what the purpose of her channel is about and that will obviously have the keywords makeup tuition and that sort of stuff in here comes the real tips right the secrets if you like some of the secrets what you need to do is make sure that your description has more internal links than external links. So Phoebe obviously wants to link to her product page on her website. She wants to link to her Instagram account, her Snapchat account, her Twitter account. So she's already got about five or six external links linking out from YouTube. Now, so what you need, what you need to do is you need to counter that. And the first two ways you counter that is by... Um, asking people to share this video using this url so you get the little url it gives you as soon as you've uploaded your video and you paste it into your description under the words share this video using this url then you also say subscribe please subscribe to my channel and then you put the url of your channel underneath so you've already got more two internal links linking internally to youtube than you have um your, so you're catching up on your external links now then what you need to do is open a new tab and go to the YouTube homepage and put in your own key phrase that you've chosen and go and find, right, and then sort by view count. You've got a, an option to sort by date or view count. Sort by view count and find the top five to seven most popular videos that are showing up with the most views for your key phrase. 
and have a little section in your description. I put it right at the bottom that says, if you enjoyed this video, here are some more useful videos on smoky, smoky eye makeup. And you literally put the name of the video and then underneath it, the YouTube URL, which they give you when you click share under a video. And so you're making a little list of related topic videos that, and it's to telling YouTube what your video should be shown next to when, mm -hmm. for example, someone else watches one of those other videos. Yeah. You're much more likely to get into that list of right hand videos. Yes. And you're also increasing your internal link count to seven now because you've got your share this video URL, you've got your subscribe to this channel URL, yes. and then you've got at least five other internal links. It's also abundant, isn't it? The one where it's you're lovely. Yeah, video. totally. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, you pick videos that are, are quality. You know, you don't yeah. you don't pick any old rubbish. You pick no. the top five that have got the most views that are actually relevant to your video. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the end, um, right at the very end, just repeat the sentence that you had at the beginning, which has got the key phrase in it. Because what you ideally want is your key phrase in the first paragraph and the last paragraph, and that's exactly the same for blog posts. You want your key phrase in the title, the first paragraph, and the last paragraph. And also, we've heard that you know Google is now giving extra weight to blog posts with external links because, it, again, it's abundant, and it, it means that your blog post is more likely to be thought of as an authority post rather than a, link, a clickbait post. Yeah. Finally, go down to your tags and put in your exact key phrase, one or two variations of it. So, for example, with Phoebe, you might do smoky eye makeup, smoky eye makeup for guys, smoky eye makeup fall if you're doing, you know, something autumn-y. And you might put smoky eye makeup autumn because you want to cater for the Brits and the Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go mad with your tags. Keep it to about five to seven tags. And the final tip is put one unique tag in each of your videos. So, for example, I put in... Uh, 2016 NC um, IC something like that something that's unique to you and then what that does is it tells YouTube that when they finished watching your video they should show the rest of your videos over on the right hand side as an option for people to watch okay there's a lot more in the John Penberthy course it was a really brilliant value actually course. Nico that's yeah. enough you, that that well I hope you're going to get that bit transcribed for a blog post for yourself but that's that's exactly what I wanted you to do um, because if people just do those things for their videos it's going to make creating videos worthwhile. Yeah and you know Phoebe's results were she did a few where we before we started the course and as soon as she started doing those four or five things I've just told you she was getting more views in a week than she'd got in three months yeah. previously. There you go. And it's not difficult to get an edge, is it, if nobody else is, if all the rest of us are doing is just creating content and banging it up. Yeah. Out, I mean, the, the real work, I always say to my clients who want to write a book, well, you know, the real work begins after you publish the book on Amazon. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, once you put your video up and it's, it's all descriptive and everything, um, you can... You can, there's, there's several, I won't go into any more detail. We might go into a, do an advanced version of this yes. later. Yes. But you need, then go to share it. Go, yeah. you know, go in and share it to Facebook from, from YouTube. Go in and share it to um, Twitter. Share it, you know, share it everywhere from YouTube itself. Yeah. Now, what we do with the podcast is we tend to, um, rather than, yeah, we, because we publish it first on our blog. Yeah. We tend to share the blog URLs rather than the U iTunes URL, which is yes. fine. Yes. It means traffic to the website and that's great because we've now got um a thing that says you know would you like to be kept up to date from this website yeah pops up because nobody was ever opting into our mailing list i don't know why but they just weren't so um you know make sure that you share from youtube but then you also take the video code and embed it on your own website as a blog post okay very nice and it's easy to get the um if you go into the share link underneath your video um you've got the option to just take the short url from there or you can click the embed tab and it'll give you straightforward embed code to put i in. think that's one thing that youtube does spectacularly well make sharing really easy yeah exactly yeah can i suggest that what we do is we 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 skip we, we reorder the rest of the podcast and go straight to podcast project updates and talk about my genius idea of the week Okay, go on then. <laughs> well, I sent you an email when you were poorly, didn't I? I tried yes, to speak to you poorly, saying, should we be publishing our weekly podcasts on YouTube? I don't know where this idea came from. It came from nowhere, because as you know, I don't really think like this or think in terms of YouTube at all. Maybe it was because it was. It was because I was planning 
my notes for this show. Yeah. And you said it was a good idea. And then, I've, then we even overnight made it even better, didn't we? Because I found some information about how to do that really easily. Can you talk about that? Why would one put audio content on YouTube, first of all? And then we'll talk about the detail that we discovered yesterday that's going to make it really easy to do. Okay, so first thing is that, um, that YouTube is owned by Google. And as we know, that if, if someone Googles something, Google's going to show the most relevant results, but they're also going to show the most relevant video on the front page of Google. But also what we've got to remember is that kids, teenagers, early, you know, early 20 millennials, basically, they use YouTube as a search engine. And it's a really efficient search engine as well, because if you think about it, when we were trying to change our kitchen ceiling, recessed ceiling lights, you just go to YouTube, if, you know, and you type in change recessed ceiling lights. And you'll find a video showing you yeah. how to do it. You can learn, learn just about anything on YouTube nowadays. Yes. So it's a brilliant search engine. And, and uh, there's a whole swathe of the population who wouldn't dream of going to Google. They just go straight to YouTube. So if you're not on YouTube with your content, then you're missing out on a, on a huge pop, you know, part of the um, visually oriented. I mean, I, you know, I'm a visual person. I, I would all, often go to YouTube over any audio solution. But, and I would use it as a, as a resource for how to do things, definitely. Yeah, so so there are lots of people out there who who would never be, listen to a podcast in their life, but would what would listen to something that looked like a video. Yeah, and in fact, I did it with um, Business Success Factory. I'm not sure how successful it was. Let me just um, let me. One of those things I sent you yesterday or overnight said something like, "Increasingly, it's being used as an audio platform," didn't it? Yeah, I don't understand that, but hey, you yeah, know. I, 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 can, you know, I don't like video, and I don't have to look at the pictures. I can still listen to the audio if I want. Yeah, and, and the thing about YouTube is you don't have to just have a flat picture with audio, which is what I did with Business Success Factory. You can actually have um, slides, you know, and, and they, the words fading in. And apparently that engages your brain while you're listening. So you're, you're absorbing the impact of the emotion in people's voices and the passion that you can hear. And it gives you a very personal connection because you're hearing their voice. Yes. But, the, but the fading in words do... Um, engage your brain and keep you stops you getting distracted and wandering off around the web basically and i i'm thinking as well of people who <coughs> listen to our podcast when they're walking their dogs and doing the shopping youtube doesn't preclude that you just you're just listening to it from youtube rather than watching it on youtube yeah that's right yeah absolutely yes yes good point so it wouldn't stop them from walking the dog while while doing it no uh, let me just see. Um, I think it might bring us in a whole new audience who yeah, I totally agree. are not interested in podcasts. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, now, let me think. Oh, God. You never find things, can you, when you want to? Just them. tell us what you're trying to Well, discover. I'm trying to show you that, that two or three years ago, I had a podcast called The Business Success Factory, yes. which um, I did get Cyril in Pakistan to turn into audio, um, to turn into videos and upload to YouTube for me. And he used to take the description from the blog post and just do it all for me. And it cost me, I don't know, ten dollars a week to get it done, something like that. Yeah. And, and he used to he did a really nice little light end at the beginning and he um Well that's a nice picture I'm looking at now. And then we discovered, didn't we, in the notes notes overnight, that because we're on Libsyn, we can upload this automatically or something? Yes, yeah, Sarah's looking into that right now. And okay. uh, and apparently what you do is when you upload your podcast audio through when you set it up through Ophonic, which is the thing that takes out all the background hiss and the sound of the flies and the olive trees being cut down in the background, <laughs> it strips out all the background noise and makes it a warmer sound. You can actually, instead of just putting, telling it to use the podcast main picture, you can actually tell it to select the picture that was in the podcast oh. on your blog. So. Fab, and automatically upload the content, whereas we thought we would have to involve one of your team of VAs, but we don't have to. It's all, yeah. It says in less than five minutes, you can connect it once and it will upload it for always. Yeah, exactly, which what? is really exciting, isn't it? I'm thinking of people like Joe Dodds, who's a listener and a podcaster, uh -huh. yeah, knowing that might be useful for her. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to find out how many, how many views the old content has got. Oh God, look at all these pictures of me when I was much thinner. How depressing! <laughs> ah, right, being a sex factory podcast. You could probably let me know this later. Here we are. Here we are. Okay. I, found it. I found it. Okay, so um, it's on clicksandleads.com. That's interesting. Uh, I'm just trying to. I'm going to sort by most viewed. 
Okay. Subscribed. Also subscribed. Videos. We'll see which ones have had the most views and how many views that is. Yes. Okay. All right. So, Mike. Interestingly, one of the people who've had the most views is someone is someone who's nobody ever heard, nobody would ever have heard of, but he's a multi-million. He teaches you how to buy businesses with their own money, basically. Okay. And uh, he's had the most views at 648. Okay. Ranging down to um, the least views at sort of 27. And how many of how many videos have you got? Did you do? Can you remember? 150. Okay, so 150 times. What's the mean average between? Yeah, the I, I think the average would be about 50. 50. Okay, so uh, 150 times 50. That's seven and a half thousand. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. worth doing, especially if it's automated in less than five minutes. And, and don't forget, if it's got a link back to your website, that's 150 links back to your website from an authority site. Oh, gorgeous. Which improves your SEO on your own website as well. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, the email I sent you where I copied and pasted that list of benefits overnight just went on and on and on. Oh, I, know. I know. And another thing and another thing and another thing. So yeah. what we're saying here is, well, first of all, something, a core message we always do, which is, uh multi uses of the same stuff yeah leverage uh the genius idea of mine just to go oh perhaps the video people will be interested in audio and presumably vice versa perhaps the audio people will be interested in video you know that you don't you don't know do you and the search engine thing i think is vital uh it's another audience with no extra work uh what else yeah and there's i mean you're appealing to all the lear learning modalities yeah and you're giving yourself, I mean, what, what I do is obviously the only the podcast goes onto our website on yep. Friday yep. and then Patricia takes it and she embeds part of the description and the um, a link back to our website on my website. So, yep. and, and then later on the two bits of it, the word of the week and the client challenge get transcribed and that goes onto my website as a separate blog posts to yep. two separate. So, it, and, and, you know, it just gets, and then when it went in, so later on, if we do this video thing, I'll just get her to embed the video on my website every week as well. Okay, and I could do that too. We're going to open up our own channel for this, I think. Yes, we are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Now, the thing is about opening a YouTube channel, Sarah says to me, you have to start a Google profile and that does give you a G plus page automatically. Okay. And then it also it gives you the access to a, a YouTube channel. Okay. And you have to have a, a G, it has to be attached to a Gmail email. Okay, and on a scale of one to ten, how excited about you about this are you? Uh, um, Do you think it's just more hard work? No, I don't think it's hard work at all. I think the very fact that it's such easy work means we should do it. Okay. Because you know how many how many um, I mean I didn't do any of this uploading Business Success Factory podcast, and you know Cyril did it all. And how many views did, did you say I'd had on average? Seven and a half thousand. Yeah. See, it's got to be worth paying someone else ten ten dollars a week to do it, even if you. Um, well, I don't think we have to in this example. No, we don't. No, we don't. <coughs> exactly. <coughs> but, it would, but it would have been. It would have been. Facebook notes. It's another thing that we can experiment with, and then in, in six months' time, we can measure it. Yes, exactly. Mm. Exactly. So did you want to talk – are we going to talk audio marketing? Are we on to project updates now? We can't – That was project that. updates because our project updates now are all about marketing the podcast, and we found a new way of marketing the podcast really easily, we think. Yeah, so there you go. You set an intention last week and something's popped up and, yeah. and that's about the reti your reticulated activator, isn't it? Indeed. So I'm not sure that audio marketing is any different, is it? Um, I think it is a bit different. If you think about how Mike, well, actually, Mike Russell comes from an audio background, a radio background, and there's definitely a, um, a different feel to audio that's been created by someone with a radio background than some audio that's been created with someone with a visual background mm. because you know think about um startup by alex bloomberg and the other things out of the gimlet studios they came from a traditional radio background and i definitely think the the quality of their audio is better and more exciting for that you know in the same way that we used to i used to put sound effects on this podcast i'm so tempted to go back to doing that a little bit because i just think it enhances the interest value um and did, you, did have i mentioned they, they're making a film out of um the startup story by gimlet media no you know what see alex went around he had this idea for a, like a movie studio type thing for podcasts 
and he went around you know looking to raise a couple of million and he talked to lots of people but the main thing he did was record every single conversation him and his wife him and his looking for a business partner him and his new business partner him and every investor they talked to and they just recorded everything and then they put it into a podcast called startup which i highly highly recommend but it was done so well it's now been picked up and turned into a film and mm. The guys who are playing the main two roles are the guys out of Scrubs, apparently, which I've never watched, but everyone says is great. So okay. big, big name movie stars or TV stars um, playing it. So that, that's got to raise the, the profile of podcasting as well, hasn't it? Yeah. And I think there's a funny old fashioned romance about radio. Yes. Yes. You, you always wanted to be on radio more. A bit like newspapers, wanted to be a journalist, then wanted to be on the radio, never wanted to be a telly star or on telly or in a film or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it's, there's a funny old fashioned romance to radio, I think. Um, the other, the other when I was at boarding school, we used to listen to Radio Luxembourg under the sheets at night. Oh, after, yes. after the bites out. It was all crackly, turning the knob, trying to tune in, which of course you don't have anymore. But it, there's a romance from those days somehow. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, because there's a magic to it, isn't it? It's a bit like electricity, you know. How does that thing come? Yeah. You know, yeah. How does the sound? It's a bit like the internet. <laughs> yes, the internet and telly, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's all coming through the air magically and and enhancing our the in, enriching our lives. Um, one of the things I'm going to say about audio is uh, if you've got a show on Blog Talk Radio, I know you've you've had that, and I think we did back in the Money Gym for a little while. You could actually get live callers, which you can't do on a podcast very easily no that's true but it would take quite a while i think on a third party platform to drum up enough i don't know what the word is um to get to get people to call in yeah but you know if, if you're someone who's got a great i mean someone like you know mike dooley or yeah. anthony, anthony Rumbin, someone with a big social media following yes could, could certainly get enough callers on each radio well interestingly that's how hay house radio works so michael neal's got his own show on that and um all of the all of their big writers have got shows on there and people call in uh tony robbins if i were him he i'd do something and i'm sure he does that i would like to do and we could eventually do and it's not complicated it, you know you basically have your own internet radio station yeah and that, I mean, that's a business model on itself. Yes, it you know, in, in the same way that if you're just starting out and you don't feel like you're an expert to have a podcast or a channel on YouTube, you can just spend your time interviewing um, other, other people. In fact, Absolutely. And we knew a woman that did that, didn't we? Uh, she lived it. Oh, do you remember? We, we met her at a workshop once as well. Um, oh, God, I can't remember her name now. But she had her own internet radio station. Yeah. And, um, you know, someone else, I just was interviewed yesterday by someone who's starting a new podcast. And well, who was um, that lovely chap who interviewed us for um, Natural Born Coaches? Mark Mark Winnie. Winnie. And hasn't he done well with that? Absolutely. Yeah. He's created a whole business out of it. Yeah, he has. Yeah, good for him because he was, he was, you know, it was lovely to be able to help him in the early days. And now he's... Interesting, the early days weren't that long ago. It was only about 18 months ago. (laughs) And he... He's got, um, you know, a thriving business now and a new girlfriend. Have you seen that? No, no. Oh, well, there you go. I have to there go stalk him on Facebook. He's attracted a mate through his uh, online profile as well. Well, you've got to say that's a success then, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, on to word of the week. Yes, that's right. Um, you go first. International. And I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about that, but we're already um, expanding our horizons. And, you know, I'm, I, the whole point of this was to be able to go to conferences overseas and just to jolt me out of my little rut in Shoreham, basically. And I already feel more international for having, having made this initial move. Mm-hmm. So, I'll tell you my, mind's yeah. vibra- mind's vibration, and I'll tell you why, because that's word of the week on week two of five on the manifestation game that I'm doing with Jacqueline Rogers. And uh, in the last week, we've all been sending her songs that raise our vibration and she's made a youtube playlist for us which is oh, nice. wonderful to listen to because it raises your vibration literally but to which we've added today robbie williams latest song called i love my life which you must look look for immediately after the show nicola because it's wonderful is it good yeah. I, I, my favorite is um sounds of blackness i'm going all the way oh yes that is a good one i yeah. think actually love my life is going to be my anthem for a bit now because it's got a lot of i ams in it it's i am oh it's great lovely oh okay i'll check that one out robbie's always good anyway isn't he yes you can tell actually before the lyrics begin that it is a robbie song <laughs> <laughs> okay, i'll look forward to that he was uh, 
<laughs> he was posing as a gardener, wasn't he, when Nicole Scherzinger went out to judge oh, his houses? Was he? Was he? Was he indeed? He was okay. pretending to be gardening. Oh, in a, yes, that was right. Yes, yeah. and, and we blame him for Honey G going through, don't we? Oh, it might have been Sharon Osbourne. I can't remember which it one it was. Shazza, Shazza. Right. Shazza. Yes. Now, did you want to say something in project updates about yourself? Um, only, only very briefly, really. Um, I'm inch- psychologically inching closer to combining clicks and leads, nc.com, and wheelhouse marketing. Oh, rock and roll! <laughs> Good like for that. you. No, honestly, I'm going to tell you all more about it next week. But I have, you know, I got that little pension windfall. Yes. Well, I've invested um, a t- under ten percent of it in in a course that I. You're, you're going to honestly, you're going to laugh. It's called the Spirit Business. Oh, I know. Stuff like you. I know. It's being started by a guy called Mike Hill, who is one of the behind the scenes um, gurus that everyone goes to. He is Mr. Traffic, Mr. Mr. Paid Ads, Mr. You know, um, funnels and strategy and conversion. He's he runs um, a group on Facebook called the Internet Marketing Super Friends. Yeah, and, and he's become increasingly spiritual over the years, and. He, to the point where he was offered the chance to run the Internet Marketers Cruise and he decided he wasn't going to do it because it was going to interfere with his own spiritual journey. And he's met his partner through, um, I think, going on one of these sort of retreats or something. And and she is extremely um, woo-woo and spiritual. I um, can't remember her name now off the top of my head. But um, when I read the marketing, it, it was all very woo-woo, but because he's such a data-driven down to earth chap who I've met several times and who everyone else I respect likes and respects enormously. I thought I'm going to treat myself to this. And do you know what I like? The two are not mutually exclusive. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I'll be um, indulging in lots of uncharacteristic behavior. Over the next well, week. we'll like to hear about that. And while we're on this topic, um, I'm going to share something in the same vein, which is I have absolutely no plans to give up coaching. However, I, there's something I think about a lot, which is I wish I was marketing something people want, not just something people need. Oh, that's interesting. Because I see a real shift towards people finding the money for what they want, but not for what they need. That's interesting. So people will tell me they can't afford to work with me. They don't say it in those words. But then they, the next thing I think, they're on a cruise. Yeah. Or, or um, they're having a night out at the pub or they bought a new handbag or got a new haircut or whatever it is. People are prioritising, it seems to me, in these maybe difficult political and financial times on, you know, um, dancing while the Titanic goes down, you know, having a lovely life. I, I very much see people focused on what they want. And I wish I was selling what people want, not what they need. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to put it out there okay. because we know when we do that in woo-woo terms that things show up. I'm not going to start a second business or anything like that, I don't think. <laughs> but I'm just acknowledging I wish I was selling what people want, not what they need. Well, it's exactly the same as with the personal development versus internet marketing world. So, you know, the, going to Vegas and seeing the numbers quoted by some of the PD mm-hmm. people out there was just, mm-hmm. I mean, you came, I came back quite yes. astonished. And, and um, the, yeah, it, Vision talks about this a lot in, in his book. He talks about, you know, this whole spiral. He, he thinks um, entrepreneurs don't go in an upward thing. They go in a, a sort of up, up and then down a bit and up and down a bit and up and down a bit. And the, the, when you're in the down a bit one, the one the thing you have to do most is work on yourself rather than working on your business. Yes, that makes sense, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, but, but I can definitely see that there's a feel-good factor and people buy, it seems like the magic button thing. They, they don't buy down-to-earth proper tuition about how to start and run an internet business they, they buy these magic button solutions and i think the, the purchase itself makes them feel better right so they are buying what they want rather than what they need right there so yeah, yeah. how you how as a marketer you get over that i don't know well i think that you know it, it may be that on the front end of my business is them buying what they want and that we get into relationship via that and then they buy what they, some of them buy what they need later on. Perhaps. Yeah. But yeah. It would, it would have to fit into the same business for me. Well, you, you'd have to, you know, at least you've got lots of people in groups that you could ask what they want 
you know, rather than what they need. Definitely. Well, they all bought what they need, and they're they're the few. I think it's the it's the fabulous appeal of the many that I see, uh, you know, fiddling while Rome burns, spending money like it's going out of style on things they want. They always find the money for what they want. That's what I'm saying. And and as marketers, that's something we all need to pay attention to. And so I envy my clients who are selling things, lovely things, jewelry and pictures and stuff like that, because people will buy find the money for stuff they fall in love with. Perhaps it's a question of, well, you can't do this because you're about to leave the country, but I was going to say, perhaps that's why people who market workshops in luxurious locations, you know, as a front end. Well, I'll business. definitely be doing that when I'm in my luxurious location. Yeah, well, exactly. And I was yeah. I was thinking the other day, I was floating in the sea yesterday, um, thinking about all the, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, a spiritual centre just up the hill, but also, my mate Elias has got a whole hotel down the road that is pretty much empty in the winter. And I'm just wondering if we could, you know, think about retreats and things. But, mm. and, you know. Well, you take it easy. Let's yeah. get the best. Let's see where <laughs> your spiritual thing leads, first of all. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So who or what's impressed this week then? Well, I'm not going to name them by name, but there are a couple of my clients who are content creators and they've, they've both of late had rather radical breakthroughs. And you know what it is where one of them has massive social media following but had been creating content and it not really doing her any good for a very long time. I and mean, she's, got, she's got a social media following that you and I would, would kill for. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, it hadn't really done her any good. And there have been some breakthroughs where it's, really starting to do her a lot of good. She she went and pitched to a proper publisher to create something called a bookazine. I don't know if you know what a bookazine is. No, I don't. I don't really either. It's, it's, I don't, I don't know. Unless it's, what, unless it's what Charles Dickens did, which is where he serialised his book. Anyway, I, anyway, the point is they've now, she's now partnering up with them to produce a magazine, which is of which she'll be the face, which is very exciting. And another one I know was beginning to despair about, you know, the newsletter and the blogging and it not going anywhere. And she's been picked up by a, a newspaper now and she's pitched a podcast and been invited to go on. Um, I just, just see a couple of women content creators making breakthroughs, largely actually, because they went and pitched. They mm. didn't wait to be asked. They went and pitched. There you go. And, and that's a, an impressive thing to see people doing. I think we constantly underestimate how valuable ideas are and creativity because it's not generally valued in the workplace. But, you know, every 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 receptacle of content, they're desperate for ideas. No, I mean, this is the thing about Huffington Post. Everybody yeah. says, I'm a Huffington Post blogger. Yeah, big deal. They need loads of content. They're hungry for it. You know, take them a half-decent idea and you're in. And that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um. Right. Well, who or what's impressed me is a 14 year old from Hamburg called Lawrence. We have met some absolutely delightful German people. Um, Bernd, which is like Bernard without any of the um, vowels. Yeah. And Anya, his wife, and uh, their, their son, Lawrence. And Lawrence, we got, I don't know, they were on the next table to us. I can't remember. Someone, I think Bernd lent over. He's a very, very outgoing, loud, gregarious, friendly chap. <laughs> and uh, he, he let know we just got talking anyway and Lawrence is is the, the English speaker out of them although he does sometimes have to resort to Google Translate so it's it's a lively fast conversation with lots of laughing and lots of Lawrence translate this <laughs> but he he makes stop motion videos on YouTube he's got his own little YouTube channel and he's mad about wrestling so he's very keen on also the um, action figures from the wrestling world. And I mean, I love anyone with a passion. I love anyone who's doing anything online. So we're getting on like, you know, a house on fire. And um, I've introduced him to Phoebe and Nelson through YouTube, obviously. And, you know, I've said to him, you know, you can get some royalty free music. Ask Phoebe where she gets it from. And it's just really cool. And he's, he's, he's been stalking us on Facebook. So he's found out all about the books and we've swapped Snapchat names and all this business and i've taught him about beam so every time we hook up it's not like this talking to a 14 year old he's just the most um gregarious confident young man who is passionate about things and it's it's just a breath of fresh air to meet someone like that at, at that age it's also very nice to be able to have a connection across the generations I yeah think. well i said to him last night i said i bet you didn't think that, you know one of the mo two most interesting people you'd meet you know in in stupor would be over 40 yeah it's quite <laughs> one yeah. of the 
one of them considerably older than that. Well, what did he say? He said, no, I, I didn't imagine that for the, for the world. But, you know, he's even invited himself up to have a, have a look around the house. And everything. Oh, bless him. I like the sound of him a lot. His father slipped on the second day and, and hurt himself. Because we know we've had this torrential rain. So he hurt his hip. So we kept running into him in the village. Um, and he and very sweetly calls it them Papa and Mama, which I find really endearing. And and he's been out, you know, buying German newspapers and paracetamol for his dad on a regular basis. So. Oh, bless yeah, it's just nice. And, you know, the fact that you can go on, well, you know, they're on holiday and we're in the place that I love, but that you can just make an instant connection over at a Verna table. And, and you know, I, I think there'll be people we'll keep in touch with. Yeah, how nice. Amazing. That's it for me. That ties in with your Word of the Week International as well, doesn't it? It does, very much so. Never thought I'd, I'd be remotely tempted to go and visit Hamburg, but it's starting to look quite promising. <laughs> <laughs> so Heather does say that in Germany they have marvellous Christmas markets although I'm not interested in buying any old toot because obviously I'm, it won't fit in my two suitcases my beautician's son is a ballet dancer in somewhere like oh it's Hanover not Hamburg and they go there a lot and they report back that it's a fantastic city I mean of course uh, there are so many brilliant cities in the world that, that too many for us ever to get round to all of them yeah so if you meet people over at a Werner table you're much more likely to go and visit one because yes, you know that's true yeah. that's true yeah well, it'd be nice to have a, a, a friend, a friendly um, people who you like in every town in the world. Every city. Well, and if you meet them all at your taverna table and stupid, you're not doing half bad either, are you? <laughs> That's what you call an efficient use of time. It's, it's and, the world's coming, and the world's coming to you, Nikki. Exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much, Judith. It's been a well, lovely episode. Yeah, darling. See you next week. Yeah, speak to you yeah. soon. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. <laughs>